What would a chef be without his chef's jacket? Or a housekeeper without her feather duster? No matter the trade that one is involved in, it is essential that their tools be provided for adequately. The recycling business and subsequently its economy is growing every year in Mzanzi. While the challenges are varied and particular, there is an apparent progression towards the success of building a circular economy. A number of individuals across our land have also realized the full potential behind starting a recycling business. But with this realization comes the desire to build and grow. What exactly does one need to grow and to build? Today on Paikisa, we explore the needs and desires of entrepreneurs in the recycling business. What are some of their hopes and desires for their initiatives? But most importantly, what are the needs that speak to them directly and to their potential to become more than just collectors and sellers of recycled materials? Ah, welcome to another exciting and informative episode of Paikisa. I'm your host, Lerato Za, and I'm Tanja Sikala Notepo Mazibugo, a certified data capturer who, when he lost his job, decided to go into waste collecting and recycling. At the time, he had no idea that that venture would lead him into a land of greater opportunities. My name is Tando Mazibugo and I'm a director in K1 Recycling but I also work here as a business process manager. So I assist with all the processes and all the systems that need to be in place to make this business work. My name is Tsepo Mazibugo, and I'm the managing director of K1 Recycling. Uh, what I do is to just overlook the whole running of the business from the employees to the suppliers and to make sure that we actually reach our targets. I struggled to get employment just for about four years. I was struggling on sending CVs, but I couldn't get a job. And the only one that was providing for us at home, it was my wife, which is my partner. And that, you know, made me to be really confused and frustrated. And until I met uh, a gentleman uh, who actually told me about recycling to say, hey, look, this thing actually can make you money. And at first I saw 30 people and it didn't make sense. But somehow in me, it says, try it. And then I then spoke to my wife, who at first didn't like understand it as well. But uh, I gave it a try anyway. So I woke up in the morning as well, organized the trolley, and I'll go to the dustbins, uh, collecting this waste. And from there, the passion actually started. Now that uh, AK1 is fully operational, um, we've got like over 800 suppliers from the community. We hire mostly youth, you know, who are just sitting in the township, not doing a lot with their lives. So now at least they have reason to wake up and come to work and actually also develop their lives. As they say, we were the Zamazamas. Uh, we saw that we can actually take it to another level. But we learned that uh, we need isn't just fun and a machine. We need things as fun and a transport because the recycling is a volume-based business. Uh, you're chasing all the time volumes. So that's when we started now to want to get information on how can we get access to this equipment or um, uh, uh, vehicles in order for us actually to ukulisi business late. I come along with Sakil and Nkala in nine in clone section. Sepong then a Tangana and a cousin, Mrs. Sindin. Nakona means of seven of my two days go away, then guess at Talala Pogan, then Salukis Kubeg and I Stoke Sidna Taspin, Stop Yuku, who spin this collecting at Macasta, and then some days. What Konomum to be operating machine like Lua Yagela, then been looking in Peg among the seven with two ends Arajan. Then I call up when I'm going to machine. Machine like I want to make sure that if I got a kiss to get sneaky, then con good never never eat a kid in it, and then con enough fast like I want to pay. Then the second will keep it in the car. Yeah, I enjoy seven zala. Moba isn't it in it is fundela na. Nezin this is in it is in zagadi le. But like but my IT being in my IT being in my car ti. Then nezin is in it con good zenza con I'm asinga. Then uh, in life, we in the my mobile, my parents want me. We say we show me. Then they bring a call. No one's a something. No one's any. We say we no cube. We say we enzela. My mobile. Nanga pa kona ma training. We baba zowa enza like operating machine. Then after that, we baba zung cha cha bang enzele for go by technician. 
so we took away some cool recycling. The Cadillac 2009. At 2010, the cancel of the because the Tila Fata Tuloyarona, I look over who cancel a happy happy at a recital, but a scarlet and so it's more. And the Ravere recital, Ravere Copanali Tepo, because Nenter Rekisa who remade. And a re resupula chelta transport to his a din totaco dry wook barbata chalet, de utolo garena chalet. So Harakopana let's have pohulava vitre because re rekisa haufiniana and a chalet area hona or re hute, re cooke re reke di joka tu. Onaje ake rekisa hotepo, kehona or ka te a month, gaeza eight hundred to one thousand and then. He could work at Tavila Haholo, Hats of Patola Michini, Duloya Hai Eva Viter, one who chore a Lenacatum, Bopilovaca Butova Viter who fit a moment of living. There is untapped potential in applying our minds to create value through the waste that we collect. I've cooked a development firm. Yeah, property. But the buildings are highly within the inner city. Everybody convert that into apartments. So the idea was, how do we create jobs, support a social initiative, and also promote sustainable uh, livelihoods through fresh vegetables or the food markets as well. Modima mo barle it would look at recycling options. Can't we reuse the material? Gardening We grew all sorts of vegetables. Got into a partnership with two ladies from a cooperative called Tlaho Agricultural Cooperative, of which Bona Naile Basari Baba Bedi Basnam Merek. Whatever they produced more gardening, they would use to resell into the market, as well as within the building itself. Kore Modi Tenants Arena at a lower price, so it's an income generating thing for the ladies. Bakudili as a cooperative. Bakadila Bali two, Konavanum by eight. That's how Kamko Kolo ya garden e ebatusi zengate. Kekamko rekonileng ko ko bafa that opportunity for a by Kudise as Batu and as a cooperative. Well. I'm starting to think maybe we should get a new name all together because it's really not waste at the end of the day. Ninga and go after the break, we'll be back speaking to institutions that are in support of building these new businesses. Today, K1 Recycling boasts owning several vehicles, machines, and a number of assets none of which would have been possible without a corporate voice. Let's now speak to Nolutando Tutani from Enterprise Room on the potential she saw in K1 Recycling. This is Nolutando, thank you so much for joining us, La Pagu Pagisa. What is the working relationship between Wenano, Tepo Mazbubo and K1 Recycling? Tepo is one of the businesses we support as Enterprise Room but he's in a program with Anglo-American Zimele, and how it works is they link a business that they've funded with mentors, and we are the appointed mentors. We do an analysis of the business to see what his needs are for his business. How were you able to identify the immediate needs of the business? We assessed his business, we looked at his financials, we looked at the amount of money he's received, from Anglo for funding, we look at how many employees he's got, then we look at the gaps, identify the gaps, then we're able to come up with a mentorship plan to say, okay, Tsepo, these are all the issues we've identified in your business and how can we help you? What are some of the key needs uh, for a buyback center to operate at its optimum level? I would say that the key needs would be mostly cash flow because you find a supplier coming to sell the goods, payment needs to be done immediately, the bailing as well is pretty key. It depends on how fast he bails and how many bales he can produce. What are K1's recycling biggest challenges at this point in time? Most SMMEs are looking for customers all the time, but his issue is he's got too much customers. You constantly need K1 
cash flow and to feed money back into the system. You sell today, you have to buy again tomorrow. What are some of the benefits K1 Recycling has been enjoying with the machines and the vehicles that have been purchased? At first he was operating more at small scale, but now he's been able to expand his business and he's got a better reach in other locations around Katlehong and other surrounding areas. How long will the mentorship and partnership with K1 Recycling and with Tepo uh, carry on? The relationship with uh, Tepo will carry on for as long as he still requires the mentorship. Mm -hmm. Finally, what is the end goal, Sis uh, for K1 Recycling? He wants to get into uh, pelletizing, processing, buying plastic, processing it, and selling it to manufacturers that mold plastic, the chairs we sit on, the cups we drink with. That's where he'd like to get to. That sounds really awesome, and we wish you and Tap and K1 Recycling the best of luck. Thank you. My name is uh, Makoma Nintabo. I'm a trust administrator for Eguruleni Piemon Chambers of Commerce Trust which is one of the four trusts that are BEE empowerment vehicles within the bigger Piemont group. Hey, good morning, Mr. Masbuk. How are you? How is the project doing today? Are you still on course? No, we're still pushing. The relationship between the trust and K1 Recycling is that of a funder and a project. Tepo Masbuko came to the trust in August last year, applying for grant funding so that he could buy a bailing machine. So the trustees approved 195,000 to buy a new bailing machine for this company. I think it improved a lot because before the trust came, he only had one machine. The difference between him and others is that he has got markets, he's got very good financial management systems in place. Every month, he sends a progress report to the trust explaining how he complied with management systems, explaining the number of employees, advising us of any opportunities in terms of growth for his business. When I come into your site, the first thing that I look for is the equipment. What lessons are there for the trust to get so that in future, when we get a similar project, we will be in a position to advise them on the appropriate of course of action so that the project becomes economically sustainable. Entrepreneurship is a profession that comes with its own set of challenges. Fortunately, in the recycling sector, institutions like the National Recycling Forum have been established to support and further the work for buyback centers such as K1 Recycling. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure meeting you. Please explain to us what the work of the NRF. Okay, the NRF abbreviation stands for National Recycling Forum. NRF is a non-profit organization that consists of most of the packaging companies. So it's a combination of different materials that come together three times a year and talk about how we can work together and increase our recycling rates. For a small and medium recycling business to operate at its optimum level, what are the tools of trade? Premises, very important. Mm -hmm. And of course your technology. And I'm not talking about big, very expensive technology, but the basic technology is a bailing machine. And then of course, skills and training. Is there space for corporate companies to get involved in the development of circular economy? I think most of our companies are involved in circular economy, yeah. uh, which is now the new buzzword in recycling as yes. well. It's from, from the raw material right through to the conversion where you make the product, right through to where it gets collected, recycled, and back into a product. Why haven't corporate companies uh, become more involved in developing recycling businesses and turning them into powerhouses? We are there to support the corporate world. And I think that collaboration is very important to ensure that whatever powerhouses we develop in recycling are sustainable. It gets me thinking, how do ordinary citizens help this process? Get it back, put your PET bottles, your milk bottles, your paper, your glass cans, put it in a separate bag and yeah. put it there. At that end of the day, those materials don't go to a landfill, at least going to somebody that needs the volumes and he can sell it and make a living. Finally, how do you see the industry government working together and evolving? There's a big change in the way industry and government think in the way forward in the recycling industry. Yes. We are currently busy with the paper and packaging industry waste management plan. And what this plan will entail is to find ways of increasing the recycling rates of various materials and improve recycling and send 
less packaging, less materials to a landfill. Mr. Stein, thank you very, very much for your time. We've learned so much and good luck. With great organizations such as this one, it's certain that the recycling industry has the potential to really build our economy. Although there is a lack of resources, there definitely is a clear interest in its development. Prince Twal, we are Alexander Township. When I was young, when I was young, when I left school, I, I studied Menzi Zinto, Nizan. Okay, this is Govanji Ranchi. This is my punk, this is Govanji. We appreciate it. So, I think that's going to be my work. If I look at the Ninja, I need to listen. Nainza EV, Nainza Ama earrings, Nainza Ama sunglasses. And I'm going to go to Rinyam. France, Banayo, Chicago, around the world. I'm going to go to Fruitcake, I'm going to go to Collect Maleso, a pop shop, I'm going to go to Collect Maleso. I'm going to go to Lala Ganji Vural. I'm going to go to Kamu. As you can see, gold, as you can see, I keep them in silver and gold. The time is a second the students are not Robin Field, Banumdum. So the schools are using the college, so they were more expensive. The schools were charged at seven thousand a piece, giving you one. The schools are using the Baba Shati, the Baba Tengim. I remember the last time it was eight thousand, eight thousand. They bought it. I would love it, you know. I want the Baba Tengim to be gold and silver. I want the Baba Tengim to be gold and silver. I mean, people must, but Prince, that's it. So, totally busy in the service. If no good for all, I'm not going to go. 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 I'm not Recycling machinery is very expensive. God, the payout is just as high. Ule Wusilepe, a transporter for Edisa, is intent on climbing up the income ladder and mastering his domain within the circular economy. Let's check him out. I would like to thank you so much for joining us, Monama Pagisa. Just the overview of your business, your employees, and the areas that you operate in. My name is Lebhang Silepe. I'm a founder and director of the company named Roneta 28 Resources. Fortunately enough, I'm a transporter for Redisa. What I do, I clean up environment on behalf of our future generations to come. I go to tire dealers, I pick up scrap tires, making sure that they arrive safely in the depot. What does uh, Roneta 28 Resources provide? We provide logistics services. Now, Lebo, obviously, transportation is central to your tool of trade, right? So, how vehicles? evolved your business? I started with a one-ton buggy. I realized that I need to change because it doesn't give me as much volumes that I need. I had to go and organize three more trucks, bigger trucks, four tons, eight tons. Then I've realized that now if you've got bigger capacity, you are able to service your clients in time efficiently and be able to deliver. Zero to 100,000 kilometer vehicle on the clock, that's what is important in my business, vehicles, quality vehicles. Right. I decided to go to the guys I hired a truck, a good truck is in good condition, it gives me three loads a day, it's a big truck, an eight-ton truck. I'm making it sweat so that it can bring me more profits. How did you come to the decision to provide transport as opposed to uh, working with collectors or even working at a depot? I realized something when I was still young that I can't do eight to five. <laughs> you know, then I decided, okay, logistics will allow me that opportunity to create employment decent employment for our people, try to keep the issue of unemployment. And I'm achieving that, even though I'm not employing too many people, but there's a difference that I'm making. How does Roneta 28 Resources fit into the Redisa uh, cycle? I think we play a very important role as transporters. Logistics in our country is a spinal cord. Without us moving goods, there's going to be problems. What is the goal for uh, Roneta 28 Resources? I've got a short-term and a long-term goal. Okay. The short-term one is to create more employment, yeah. make it more sustainable. Even if I'm not there, but it's working, I've left a legacy. What I would say in terms of a long-term, which is a process, I want to build 
Braneta 28 Resources to be a world township logistic company. After a year, but I need to do it professionally, so you know, like I have a warehouse, everything, a gas. Even those guys that who are working for me, I don't want them to spend their money on transport. They just have to wake up from home, go to work, then they'll walk back home again so that they, they can be able to sustain their families. Wow. Well, your vision is clear, it's solid, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Manjasego is cut to say in Vira Hagetu for the week. I'm sure you've noticed just how versatile a PET plastic bottle can be. Let's check out our boy Dwaiza once again, showing us his rather crafty side. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another EnviroTip segment on your favorite show, Pagisa. I'm your boy, Swiser, and today I'm going to help you save money. Let me paint you a scenario. Hello, sweetie. Yes? It's your birthday. No, 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 there's no problem at all. Do you believe in the thought that counts? Perfect. I've got the gift for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again to give you solutions to your problems. All you need is an empty bottle of your two liter, masking tape, a pair of scissors, craft knife, a bow, ribbon, and cellar tape. You lay the bottle down, use your craft knife, and we will make the incision. You kind of cut it neat so. There aren't any rough edges. Voila. And then you get this little rid of that piece. What we do now is take the masking tape. And this is basically just to create, you know, your borderline. All we do now is take the scissors, cut them down to the base where you put your tape at. And once you've achieved that, you remove the masking tape and you put these as such. See? When it's full, you then bend the pieces that you cut out, grab your sailor tape, nice and neat. After all, next, you take your ribbon fabric, cut it in half, equal length size, and you wrap. Be careful that you actually hold it down together. Well, and essentially, I'm just the guy. It should be something like this. And ladies and gentlemen, here you have it. Your environment tip of the week. Save us money, save us time. That was so awesome. Manjaga, you can get the step-by-step -step instructions on Facebook. And please do write to us on Facebook and Twitter and share your green tips with us on our Instagram page. Looking forward to hearing from you. Oma Ofuna, your business to grow in leaps and bounds. You can achieve that because there are institutions that will support you. I am Zanzi, it's Katsogu Titsina Tambe. So from myself and the Pakisa team, thank you so much for joining us. Catch us next week, same time, same place. Mzansi, remember, let's keep the cycle going.